starting off there in um, physical, hard-fought uh, match against Charlotte Independence tonight. Obviously didn't quite end the way uh, the kickers were hoping to. Um, can you kind of just give your initial thoughts on, on how the match went tonight for the guys? Well, I'll say it outside. The officiating wasn't what we thought it needed to be, but I, I'm... We created enough chances in the first 30 minutes to have some goals on the board. Uh, but how about the resilience of the group, man? I'm incredibly proud of the guys. We went down to nine men and created a couple of chances to score. Then we went down to eight men and created a couple more. So uh, I think it bodes well for the playoffs. Uh, we go to Omaha and it's time to get it on. And, and looking at both the first half stats, even before um, the 40th minute red card for Dakota Barnathan, um, kicker's really dominating in the attacking end. Six shots, four on target finding even more chances in the second half despite trailing by a man, trailing by two men. Um, you know, what was working tonight on the attacking end? Yeah, our guys, they're confident. They know they can play. They're willing to fight for each other. You know, Chandler did great in the 10. When Neil came on, he was good as well. So we're 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 ready to go. It's time to, to, to go ahead into the playoffs. I, you know, it's a group of guys that are willing to fight for each other. They've had a really difficult year, and now we have an opportunity in a new three-game season. You know, people can say whatever they want. It, it, it's all wide open now. And then, again, um, Josh Kirkland getting another start, um, two in a row for him, having some really positive play on the right wing. Simon Fitch, again, right behind him, really creating a lot of chances as well. What's working as you start to see that partnership start to blossom between those two? Look, man, we're a local community team. You know, you had Griffin Garnett and James Snedden and, and others like we're uh, there's a lot of local ties here. Those two love each other and they play well together. You know, uh, Josh is learning and growing as a pro. You know, he's, he's drinking from the fire hose right now. Uh, I thought he created a couple of really good chances and he's getting better every week. And then Chandler again tonight having some offensive output, nearly finding a goal. I think once in the first half, once in the second half, uh, what was what was working for him tonight? Chandler has just grown into a veteran pro. You know, I can play him in multiple spots. He knows what needs to happen. He's dangerous on set pieces. He's becoming a good leader. You know, I'm happy for him. He's grown and, and he deserves it. How proud of you with your team's resilience, even with the unfortunate red card in the 40th minute, to still go out there, create chances, and to keep the game as balanced as they did? Great. You know, we're, we're, we're not a 11 strong. I mean, we're, we're 20, 21 strong. I mean, there were guys that didn't even suit up tonight that probably could have helped us, and maybe they're going to have to help us now with the Reds. So I'm, I'm proud of them because, man, what a weird, hard year it's been for these guys, you know, finding points. But they found it in the end. And, again, no one has any points in the playoffs, right? What is your message? I'm trying to figure out this race. What is your message to the players after a game like this to encapsulate the whole season but then be like, hey, we're still focused on going on you know where you're going now? One, I'm incredibly proud to be associated with everybody in the room because uh, it's hard, man. You had to fight all the way to the last couple games of the season to get in the playoffs. Um, and then the second part of it is we're right there, man. We're right there. Like, we could have won that game tonight even down a guy. So uh, we're right there. We got a tough task in Omaha, uh, but we're going to go in there and give it a shot. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, one more question about Simon Fitch. Um, was named Red Army MVP to, uh, for the season. I believe he played every single minute in the USL League One regular season um, and probably played just about every single minute in the Jägermeister Cup. Can you just talk about what Simon brings to the table, his Iron Man qualities and, and how he's blossomed as a player over the last three years? Simon Fitch is the Richmond Kickers. He's from here. He's a local kid. He went to VCU. And uh, I'm uh, I'm just incredibly proud of him on how much he's grown. Uh, great leader, good player. Love him. Last thing then. Um, with this result, kickers locked into the eighth seed. They will be going to Union Omaha uh, for the number one seed. Um, down in Omaha, Nebraska on Sunday. You know, what's the focus going into, into the week? And then... Uh, Slightly elongated week with it being a Sunday match. Well, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do, but we have a game plan. We, we figured it'd be Omaha, and, you know, if it was somebody else, we have a game plan for that, too. So uh, we're excited. It's unfortunate that Dakota got a red card. We'll see if that's uh, able to be overturned, but if not, there's guys that will step up. So we're excited. We're ready to go. All right, so uh, we'll get started off, Chandler. Um, obviously not quite the result that the team wanted tonight, but a really good attacking output um, from the team, even – down a man at one point, down two men, um, really having a strong defensive output as well to make, you know, really cut down on Charlotte's chances. How do you feel like the, the night went for uh, the team tonight? Um, uh, tough game when you go down 10, <clears throat> when you're down 10 minutes, it's always going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, and then when we went down a goal, 
it changes the whole dynamics. And the way that we set up was very linear in the way that we did. So a lot of our outlets were central, um, which obviously worked, but it was difficult because we didn't really have the width with 11 men, which we typically do. Um, that hurt us a little bit when we were going forward, but saying that we still created. So yeah, it's tough, tough one, but at the end of the day, things to take away is it doesn't really matter. I think the team showed great heart, great fight, which going into next week is all you can ask for really. Just thinks that we lost two guys to red cards, especially, you know, Dak's been starting. So Landers also lost as well coming off the bench, but a starter and our current captain, so it's tough. Um, tonight, you kind of talked about it already, a little bit of a microcosm of the run of form that the team's been on. Uh, the amount of resilience and the way that you guys are playing, um, you know, even being down 10 men, creating really the better, the attacking opportunities outside of maybe just the one where they nicked the goal. Can you kind of talk about just like, you know, going down to 10 men, what was what was the message between the guys? How did you guys still find yourself in these situations where you could have found a result tonight? Um, I mean, like, what are you going to do? you got to get, up, get on with it, really. Um, in terms of the team getting together like we knew that we had to work harder that's like unquestionable you don't even have to like communicate that to anyone that's a, it's a non non-negotiable um in terms of like from the coaches obviously we wanted to try and stay compact stay narrow as soon as they pass the ball back try and step up it's difficult when you've got 10 men and then when we go down to nine men it's like you know you're running on empty so yeah today's kind of one of them ones it's like yeah take the positives doesn't really matter too much because we've got the playoffs next week. But uh, yeah. How was that just prepared for y'all when y'all got the red card? Like it took it seemed like it took you guys maybe like a couple of minutes to figure out like all right, this is what we can do, this is what we definitely can't do. How, how was that adjustment for y'all? Yeah, I think I think they played a little different too, straight away from the red card. So naturally there's gonna be a little bit of adjustment. Um, it's hard to put pressure on the ball when you're at ten because we were playing a four four one with a striker, right? And Emmy. I mean, he's busting his nuts to get everywhere, but he's one person compared to four at the back. So as soon as you press one way, they get out. Everyone has to shift. And then because you're down one man, you're trying to figure out the ways. And then they were rotating differently because they were like, okay, well, they got 10 men, so let's try and do something a little different. So I think once we did figure that out, it was okay. I think the goal is preventable, to be honest. I don't think we should con concede that goal. You know, I think if you ask guys in the back line, they probably would do things different, but it's life in it. It's football. It's ten men. Ten men. It's game. So, and um, we saw Tony Pineda and others come on the field and really get in behind um, the Charlotte defense. How was it when you you're essential in the middle of the pitch and having those guys out on the wings try to get in behind? Uh, well, when you've got someone like Tony, when when he comes off the bench and we've got eleven men, it's like a dream because you play him behind and he's going to create mayhem. But the issue, and this is no fault of his own, was we were very centrally compact and we didn't really play with wingers because it was, it was tough to with 10 men um, especially with the way they were setting up so as again it's not any fault of Tony or Landon it was their biggest strengths is out being out wide taking on the men and they weren't able to a ton but, and again that's not their fault so they, they gave their best it's that's life in it so and you, already, you guys already know what you guys. You guys know you're going to get your ball. The last time you played them here, nil nil draw. How how do you think the past really two months you guys been on the street pulling out games late, like Tormenta and others? Like how do you think that works in y'all guys' advantage going into your ball? Who's the one seed has been on fire? Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. We, okay, we're on a great run. But we're also eighth and they're top for a reason. So we got to take that extremely serious. You know, we've played at their place and not had any success this year. So we're aware of that. And I'm sure the coaching staff will make sure that we make the adjustments necessary so that doesn't happen again. Um, it's going to be a tough game. I'm sure you fans know that. We know that. Doesn't mean it's not winnable. Any game's winnable. Look at the, the last six games we've had. You know, I think I think we're doing okay. So, you know, we make the adjustments necessary. Obviously, we're losing two people, especially Dak. Um, give it everything we got, really. 
And last question, because he's not here. Um, can you just speak about what it meant to see Simon Finch get Red Army uh, MVP? Yeah, I mean, Simon's Mr. Richmond, isn't he? He's grew up here. He works his socks off every day, every game. I'm sure he's a coach's dream, you know what I mean? He, nothing really bad to say about him, you know? He just, other than he's an Arsenal fan. Uh, but, yeah. Mr. Consistency. Every every week, you know what you're going to get from him, and he deserves it. So I'm happy for him. You know, he's the sort of guy who's never going to be in the spotlight. Never going to like look at him today. He's gone off quick. He doesn't want to speak to you guys, whatever. And not that he doesn't want to speak to you guys, but he just that's just who he is. Gets in, does his job, goes home, and he's going to come back tomorrow, and he's going to do his job again. He's going to do his job the next day and every other day, and that's what he does.